Hi, today we will discuss the possible mechanisms for increase in the QT interval. What is QT interval? Within the ECG, we can see the different phases. For example, initially we can see a P wave and then we can see a complex like the QRS complex. And we can also observe a T wave. And in between this QRS complex and T wave, the interval is uh, normally fixed, which can indicate the ventricular depolarization. So here the QT interval is the distance between the beginning of this QRS complex as well as the ending of the T wave. So this distance, what we call the QT interval. So in some of these physiological conditions or physiological abnormalities or by use of any drugs, the QT interval may be prolonged. And when this QT interval is going to be raised, it can produce fatal cardiac arrhythmias. And among them, one of the fatal arrhythmias is the torse D point is. So torse D point is, is an emergency condition where the patient should be immediately treated and fatal arrhythmia should be thoroughly controlled. So it is very important for us to learn which type of drugs may have a chance to increase the QT interval and which may precipitate the torse D point is. And by knowing this information, we can also check the drug interactions where few of the drugs can increase the QT interval, which may precipitate this fatal torse D point is. So in this video, we will go with the a list of drugs which increase the QT interval and how this uh, QT interval is going to be raised, what are the mechanisms involved in the raising of QT interval, which type of drugs are responsible for the raising in the QT interval. So let us start. So let us start our discussion by just seeing how the drugs or physiological conditions can raise the QT interval. The increase in the QT interval is because of the increased depolarization. So when the cardiac muscle is going to be depolarized persistently for a longer period, there is a chance in the increase in the QT interval within the ECG. This may be possible because of the changes in the ionic uh, levels within the heart. For example, within the cardiac membrane, if there is any excessive levels of intracellular sodium is present, it may produce the persistent depolarization so that it can increase the QT interval. For example, in few of the conditions, we can observe a delayed after depolarization, which may increase the sodium levels within the cardiac membrane, which may increase the extra systoles and resulting in the increase in the QT interval. And sometimes we can also see the raised levels of intracellular calcium, particularly when the cardiac membrane is going to be damaged, like in the myocardial infarction, the calcium can go into, enter into this uh, cardiac membrane where the intracellular calcium levels may be increased. Otherwise, we can use the, some of the drugs like the cardiac glycosides, which increase the intracellular calcium levels, thereby again, QT interval may be increased. Similarly, by block of the outgoing potassium channels, potassium is very important for the hyperpolarization of the cardiac membrane. With every action potential after the depolarization, hyperpolarization is going to be mediated by outgoing potassium channels. When these potassium channels are not working properly, hyperpolarization will not take place within the time, thereby the depolarization phase is going to be increased within the cardiac membrane, which may result in the increase in the QT interval within the ECG. Suppose this is the cardiac membrane, on this uh, different channels are present, for example, sodium can enter into the cardiac membrane in the phase 0, that is the rapid depolarization phase. Similarly, the other ion channels are the calcium. The calcium is very important for the force of contraction. This calcium is going to enter into the cardiac membrane in the phase 2, the plateau phase. And potassium channels are outgoing. These potassium channels are going to be opened from the phase 2 and they are going to be more activated in the phase 3. So in this way, the sodium and calcium are going to enter into the membrane and potassium is going out of the membrane during the action potential. And similarly, few of the pumps are also present on the cardiac membrane, like the sodium potassium ATPase pump, which is going to pump the sodium outside and bring the potassium inside. So these ion channels and pumps maintain the normal functionality of the cardiac membrane. But sometimes because of any physiological abnormalities or by use of any drugs, these ion channels and pumps may not work properly, which may produce some persistent depolarization within the cardiac membrane. For example, if the potassium channels are going to be blocked by use of any potassium channel blockers, the hyperpolarization of the cardiac membrane is going to be blocked. 
when the cardiac membrane is not hyperpolarized, the depolarization phase is going to be increased. Similarly, excessive activation of the calcium channels or sodium channels can also bring the depolarization. And all we have seen another pump is the sodium potassium ATPase pump. So if this pump is going to be blocked, for example, cardiac glycosides like the desoxin is going to inhibit the sodium potassium ATPase pump, which may increase the intracellular sodium levels. So any of these conditions may cause the persistent depolarization within the cardiac membrane, which may result in the increased QT interval within the ECG. So by taking an ECG, we can estimate what is the function of this uh, cardiac membrane, how, how it is going to be depolarized. If it is excessively depolarized, we can easily observe in the ECG by an elevated QT interval. And it should be immediately treated, otherwise it may lead to the fatal cardiac arrhythmias. And metabolic imbalance. Sometimes the metabolic imbalance where the ionic levels within the plasma are going to be fluctuated, they may also result in the increase in the QT interval. For example, two important ions are the calcium and potassium. Any conditions like the hypercalcemia where there is an elevated levels of calcium, otherwise hypokalemia that is the reduced levels of the potassium within the plasma may result in the increase in the QT interval. For example, when the calcium levels are increased within the plasma, calcium can enter into the cardiac membrane through the calcium channels. So hypercalcemia may increase the chance of calcium entry in, into the cardiac membrane, thereby it increases the depolarization within the cardiac membrane. Similarly, other conditions like the hypokalemia. In the hypokalemia, potassium levels in the plasma are going to be decreased, but here the potassium is going out of the membrane into the plasma then normally we can assume that the potassium will go more outside because the potassium levels within the plasma are going to be reduced. But here this will not take place. As the potassium levels are going to be reduced, it results in the increased activity of the sodium because sodium is responsible for the depolarization. The sodium always controls the potassium. When the potassium levels are going to be reduced, the sodium can increase its action on the potassium channels and it can block the potassium channel activity. So any of these conditions like the hypercalcemia or hypokalemia can produce the depolarization within the cardiac membrane which may increase the QT interval within the ECG. And generally we can observe hypercalcemia and hypokalemia with few of the diuretics like the loop diuretics. So when the loop diuretics are used at a high dose, they can produce a severe hypercalcemia and hypokalemia which may produce some cardiotoxicity by increasing the QT interval effect on genes. G some of the genes like the HERG as well as the SCN5A are coding for few of these ion channels. For example, HERG is coding for the potassium channels and SCN5A are coding for the sodium channels. The role of HERG is to open the potassium channels. So when the HERG is going to be more expressed, it results in the increased opening of the potassium channels which produce the hyperpolarization. Similarly, SCN5A is responsible for the inactivation of the sodium channels. Normally, these genes are responsible for the hyperpolarization as well as control of the depolarization. But when these genes are going to be mutated, their function is going to be modified and hyperpolarization is not going to be produced and inactivation of the sodium channels is again not produced. So which may again result in the increased depolarization within the cardiac membrane and prolongation of the QT interval particularly the genes coding for SCN5A, if they are going to be mutated, they can produce some long QT syndrome in the patient. And sometimes we have the drugs like SSRIs and we have these antipsychotics can target uh, these genes and they can again increase the QT interval. For example, HERG is one of the target for few of these uh, centrally acting drugs, which may increase the QT interval. Effect of raise in the QT interval. Now we have seen that various mechanisms are responsible for the increase in the QT interval. By prolongation of the QT interval, what happens within the body? Or we have seen the raised QT interval may produce one of the fatal cardiac arrhythmia, torse D pointis. This torse D pointis may result in few of the symptoms like the dizziness in the patient, palpitations, that means awareness of the heartbeat, and syncope because the, there is no blood supply. The syncope can be observed, the fainting sensation, seizures. And whenever this uh, cardiac system is not working properly, it can stimulate the central nervous system which may produce some seizures. And finally, the cardiac system may be collapsed if it is untreated. So, torse D-point is a one of emergency condition which should be immediately 
ट्रीटेड